All right, the first thing I wanted to go over were these two skills that we need to perform right here. It's your first two coming up. Uh, hand hygiene and clearing the obstructed airway. We'd be a remiss program if, or it would be remiss if um, we didn't teach you how to wash your hands properly right before you start working in the medical field. Um, and that would be even without this um, pandemic going on. So let's look at what we got here. Um, I kind of wanted to demonstrate a video for you because Hartman has great videos and there's great videos on YouTube. Um, but when you're in Kentucky and you're at the, the Kentucky testing site, they're going to be going off of this paper. And so I wanted to be some, a little more specific about what they're wanting here. Uh, and that's why I've made a video too. And it's not, I'm not trying to outdo them or anything. I just wanted to make sure I was showing you what um, I would be doing in front of an instructor or a test proctor here in, in Kentucky. Um, so you can see, obviously, the first thing you want to do is remove bracelets and um, or watches, or you can push them up um, above your wrist. All rings except a smooth wedding band. Well, why is that? Um, well, smooth wedding band is just a piece of metal, okay? But these rings with the big old diamond on top, Okay, these little nooks and crannies right here is a place for bacteria to get into. And you want to make sure you're cleaning your hands without um, just recontaminating yourself with uh, those potential places of infection there. Okay, another good place to uh, harbor bacteria is on your fingernails. Okay, so if you got a fingertip here and a fingernail, there's another good place. That's why we don't allow fingernails longer than one quarter of an inch past your finger. Uh, and that's why um, NAs are not allowed to have long fingernails or nurses or healthcare workers to begin with um, because it's just it's just dirty. Uh, same reason goes for why we don't want to stand too close to the sink and have our um, have our clothes touching it because if we've been working all day in a nursing home, then we are going to be potentially carrying bacteria and things like that on our clothes, and so. We want to make sure um, we're keeping this wash area as clean as possible. So, remove your wash uh, bracelets and jewelry. Make sure you're standing away from the sink, okay? And then turn on the faucet and just find out whatever temperature you like. Just get it going. Wet your hands thoroughly, okay? Including three or four inches above the wrist. Hold your hands with wrists lower than elbows during the washing procedure. Well, if I've got hands covered in bacteria and now they're wet with a good medium to carry that bacteria somewhere if I'm, if I'm having them up waving around my face then there's potential of spreading that I'm trying to wash everything in one direction and that's down this sink so I'm gonna keep my hands down okay lots of soap good lather um, and then just working up that lather should last 15 seconds. Okay. So you want to sing uh, happy birthday to me as soon as you put the soap on your hands. And that'll be about 15 seconds. And I'm going to be looking for that in your video. Okay. Uh, 9 and 10 should last 20 seconds. Okay. And so the steps you're going to be doing when you're um, working through 9 and 10. One, you have the palms and back of hands. Wash fingers and between fingers. So it's going to look like this. Wash your wrist and lower arms. Clean under your fingernails by either using um, an orange stick, which I still haven't figured out what that is, or you can scrub them against your palms. Rinse well, still keeping your hands pointed down. And now, before you turn off the water, if that's your urge, okay? You got to resist that. This is where a lot of people is going to get uh, caught up in this. You want to grab your paper towel, dry your hands, okay? Starting at your fingertips, working towards your wrist, because now this is clean, and you're going to dry it up this way, because potentially it's still bacteria and, and dirty area here. You don't want to carry it down towards your fingers that you just cleaned. You want to dry it away. Um, 
repeat step on one hand with clean dry uh, towel or towels. And then you take one more towel and turn the faucet off. Those are the two places right before your right before you dry your hands and right after you dry your hands is where everybody messes up most of the time. And um, notice right here we got a critical step. Okay. So don't let that one get you, alright? That doesn't highlight very well. Uh, and I know that um, at home you're not going to have paper towels probably. So what I would like to see is say, you say something like, get done rinsing your hands. Like, okay, I'm going to get a clean paper towel and dry this hand off. And I'm going to get another clean paper towel and dry this hand off. Even if you're using a real towel at that point. And then you're going to say, I'm going to throw that towel away. And then I'm going to get another clean towel. And let me see you turn that faucet off with a towel between your hand and that faucet. Okay. That's probably going to be helpful more than it is in class because you're going to remember to do that when you're standing in front of a proctor, okay? So clearing the obstructed airway, it's not nearly as complicated. Um, it's only a few short steps, but there's so many critical ones in it. Um, seven out of eight are critical. Uh, so you, this is one you're probably going to have to memorize every step. Um, but always, uh, I've always been told and um, in everything I've ever read or seen, it says, uh, first step, ask them if they're choking because um, if they're not, then you're probably going to have a fight on your hand, right? Um, somebody comes up and grabs you and you're just kind of coughing on some water. You're not going to really um, want, you know, want their help. So you ask them, are you choking? You got to look at them. And there's also the universal sign, um, like this. Of choking that should be a good indicator too that they're really having a, a choking episode um, but you're looking at them and you're asking that step one <clears throat> um, if they're like yeah and there's no sound coming out whatsoever um, you could probably pretty much assume they're choking because they're going to be looking at you for help if, if you're the one in that situation with them uh, but if you're still not sure you ask them can you cough or speak because if they can do either of those if there's any air moving then they're probably, uh, you're probably not going to help them by starting the Heimlich if you hear um, a little bit of uh, coughing or talking, okay? But um, when somebody's really choking, it's there's no air moving, and uh, you can see their chest sucking in or out. Uh, but you're just going to come up behind them, okay? Wrap your arms around their waist, and always tell them when I'm coming around, Okay, make a fist, just like it says in number five. Place the thumb side of the fist against the abdomen. So a lot of people say, come around, find their belly button, and then roll up like this. Okay? Or you can come around, feel their belly button. Where it says belly button at? I'm sorry. So they'll come around, they'll find their belly button, and then they'll roll up like that. And then that's a good place. Uh, also with number five, you can come around, feel their belly button, make a fist thumb towards their abdomen okay and at that point you're done with number five um, the fist is in the middle above the navel and well below the end of the sternum okay sternum is that um, round bone you can feel at the bottom of your chest there you want to be somewhere in between there but you want those in, uh, instructors or those test proctors to see you looking for the belly button and thinking about your placement okay once you're in there though you're going to grasp your other hand with your fist step six press your fist into the victim's abdomen with a quick upward thrust and that's probably going to be like whew, Oh, really forceful kind of a really violent movement okay and uh, repeat repeat until something has come out or that the victim passes out or when the victim passes out and so if you're doing this and they go unconscious at that point it's time to lay them down and start CPR um, so we'll just run back through it one more time maybe ask the victim are you choking can you cough or speak? 
Let me get behind you here. Feel for the belly button. Roll my fist up. Thumb towards the abdomen. Grasp my hand with the other one. Quick upward thrust until it comes out. Repeat until the object has been expelled or the victim loses consciousness. 